Hello, I'm Keith Ford and welcome to this edition of From the Vault. Today I have my Russian SVT-40, the very best there is when you absolutely positively have to smoke check every Nazi trying to evade Mother Russia except no substitutes. Starting in the mid-1920s, about the same time as America was firing up its program of developing self-loading rifles for its military, the Russian military was doing the same thing. And the two programs ran pretty much parallel the whole time. And then around 1936, the Russian military adopted Sergei Semenov's Select Fire AVS-36. But after a little bit of use and service, they noticed some pretty bad deficiencies in the rifle. It was too light, too much recoil, uh, parts wearing out too quick. Then in 1938, the Russian military went with a semi-automatic design from Fedor Tokarov. But during the Winter War with Finland, there were some problems with that rifle. It was mainly too heavy then and a couple little issues. So Tokarov went back to the drawing board and come up with the SVT-40, what we see here. Now here's some basics on the SVT-40. It's a gas-operated, short-stroke piston, tilting bolt lockup, magazine-fed design. And it was a vast departure from the standard issue bolt action 9130 Nagant used by the Russian military. This gun was pretty much way ahead of its time. Early models such as this one right here actually has a rail milled into the receiver for use of telescopic sights for use by snipers and sharpshooters but after a couple of years and it not performing the way that they wanted it to that was dropped and the milling was no longer in those rifles. Now let's take a look inside and see what makes the SVT-40 run. So we'll lock her back, attach the magazine, cleaning rod is captured by a little catch right here. Press that, pull your rod out. Now then there's a little catch under here, catches that ring. Slide this forward and up and back handguard out. Now then you'll see that the here's the piston system right here and we'll rotate this and here's the spring for the piston rod and we have the gas piston right here. Now this is a gas adjustable system with about five different settings on here. And the way that you would adjust this is that there's a tool right here. Loosen this up and then you'll roll this around and there's numbers on here that will coincide with the gas port size. Theory behind this at the time is the rifle got dirty, you could adjust that to keep it running. But in a combat situation, that's really not an optimal design, especially if you're not used to maintenance and how to maintain one, and there's just too much going on. But if you're properly trained, that's, that's no big. You can keep it running. All right now then, we'll put our piston back on. And then our rod assembly. You'll need to pull this back. Push that in, and this will rotate, and that's done right there. Now then, the hand guard. Be sure to tilt this forward and down. There's two little keepers right here. Slide that retainer back up, and that's in. And she's all back together. As the German invasion of Russia caused a major shortage of firearms for the Russian army, Production was shifted back to the easier and cheaper to make 9130s, the DP-28 machine guns, as well as the PPSH-41 submachine guns. This gun was about 10 times more expensive than the PPSH-41 to manufacture and four times more than what the DP-28 was. I love shooting this gun. It's chambered 7.62 by 54. It's a full power battle rifle. It's fun to shoot. 
The recoil is really light on it, mainly because of the six chamber muzzle brake up here. But I mean, there's a lot of history behind these, and especially this one right here. This one is a 1940 model, uh, right before the war started out with Germany. And it's really good shape, the bore's great. I'd buy another one in a minute if I found it at the right price. Just be sure and give it a good going over, make sure all the parts match. Everything inside's intact, bore's good shape, no cracks. Uh, take a look at stock, make sure that there's no cracks here at the wrist area. But other than that, I mean, man, they're fun to shoot. Thanks for watching, and if you have any guns you'd like to see, leave us a comment. We'll see you next time whenever we bring another gun from the vault.